close the door, Eric. This is behind closed doors. What happens here stays here. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Uh, really appreciate. Uh, we have people from all over the place here, from London, from California, from Kuwait, from all over the place. Uh, this is our fourth event of the year. Uh, we have two more events, one, in, uh, one on uh, October 18 in Washington, D.C., and uh, one on uh, November 15 right in here with hopefully uh, David Stockman, who was the former OMB director under Reagan as a speaker. For those who don't know me, my name is Ziad Abdelnour. I'm president and CEO of Blackhawk, and I'm uh, the founder and president of the Financial uh, Forum. Let me tell you a bit, a bit uh, about the organization uh, without really boring you. We are not a political organization. Uh, we're not Republicans. We're not Democrats. We're here for one thing only, to empower people, educate them, as to what's happening out there, what are the opportunities out there available for wealth creation. It's all about wealth creation. When you create wealth, you're independent, you can think independently and move along. And the best revenge against the liberals and the Democrats out there, the people in the government, is wealth creation. We're here to empower you all to provide you with access to intelligence information that's not available anywhere out there. We're not trying to be, uh, you know, uh, trying to uh, be supportive of this or that group. We're all inclusive. This organization has grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, when I started the organization a year and a half ago, we barely had 15 to 20 attendees for our events. Right now, we have around six to 700 attendees every year. So we'd, we're uh, for sure doing the right thing, and we intend to keep doing the right thing. Uh, our speaker tonight, Alan Schwalb, is one of the most preeminent and prominent financiers for the entertainment industry. Uh, he'll tell you a lot about the movies he, f he, has, he has financed, out of which three James Bond movies, Moonstruck, Color Purple, uh, you name it. Also a big financier for the sports industry. The sports entertainment industry today is, uh, is a very hot industry, and it's pretty much recession-proof. So if you know what you're doing, you can make money in there year in, year out. We always li like to find niches out there uh, for wealth creation. That's uh, for sure a niche worth looking at. Anyway, I don't want to bore you with more details. We're going to keep it very short. Alan is going to provide you with a description about the industry. It's not going to last more than half an hour max. And then we're going to leave the rest for Q&A. We really would like to brainstorm these issues as much as we can. We're not here to tell you things, but rather to pick up your brain and brainstorm issues of importance. Any questions, you can ask any questions. There's no media here. It's very private. It's for us only. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Alan Schwalb. Thank you, Ziad. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, somebody has to do the financial thinking for this country. And thank you, Ziad, for the initiative you've taken with FPC and the job you're doing and your accomplishments with FPC. Um, in, in the one and a half years, I think you've accomplished a lot from everything I've been able to find out. Now, FPC's goal is to ensure, as I've learned, is to ensure and retain Americans leading role in free enterprise and wealth creation in the global economic community, correct? Now, uh, I don't know of any other any industry uh, other than the entertainment industry that has uh, really 
if anything, take, took that and uh, put it exactly where it is, becoming the country's second largest export. Uh, other than the aerospace industry, the motion picture industry is our second most uh, uh, largest air, uh, export, and uh, I'm proud to be part of it. And some of you here are also part of it, and congratulations to you too. Um, uh, I had uh, the privilege and honor to uh, form a joint venture with Warner Brothers, and for four straight years, I financed uh, every single Warner Brothers film in four joint ventures in four successive years, and uh, ended up financing a lot of interesting films like uh, three Superman films, three of Clint Eastwood films, one of which has gotten a lot of notoriety and publicity over the last few days, namely a film, the Clint Eastwood Dirty Harry film, Sudden Impact, you know, go ahead, make my day. Well, I can't tell you how many phone calls I've gotten in the last week <laughs> regarding everybody calling me up, Alan, make my day. <laughs> well, but along with that, I guess in the following year, financed the film of his called Tightrope. The year after that, a film called Heartbreak Ridge. Then I financed Superman 2, 3, and 4, Rocky 5, Pull the Guys 3, and a whole bunch of other numbers, and a couple of James Bond films, as he had mentioned, Never Say Never Again, and License to Kill. Um, subsequent to those four years where I was partners with Warner Brothers in a joint venture called Warner Brothers Star Partners Company. Star Partners is my wholly owned company. Um, Metro Golden May merged with United Artists to form MGM UA Communications Company. And um, they had then asked me to come over there when they were looking to figure out where they were going to get the capital to run not one but two studios. So they uh, um, asked me to come over and made me a deal I couldn't refuse. Uh, so for the next three years, I ended up financing uh, all of Metro Golden Maze films and all of United Artists films. And I happened to hit it at a good time because uh, some of the films I was able to finance were Rain Man, Moonstruck, Fish Cold Wanda, Thelma and Louise, Overboard, Rocky V, License to Kill, another James Bond film, um, Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze, and uh, a bunch of other interesting films. Polar Guys 3 was one as well. Now, um, the, um, and by the way, these films that I was able to finance at Warner Brothers as partners with Warner Brothers and partners with MGM and United Artists, uh, garnered 16, uh, 64 Academy Award nominations for which we won 16, and including one in every major category like Best Film, uh, you know, Best Picture of the Year, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting Actress, and a lot of other Academy Award nominations. And a matter of fact, the one thing I am proud of, because it's probably unheralded in history, is that for six consecutive years, one of the films I financed was nominated for the Best Picture of the Year, um, which was The Right Stuff, and the next year, The Killing Fields, next year, The Mission, next year, The Color Purple, the next year, Moonstruck, and then the next year, Rain Man. So that was quite a, quite a run, so that is one thing I'm proud of. Um, the, uh, <laughs> now, I, w I will say it was a little frustrating because every year for the first five years, we never won, we came in second. First year, the right stuff was beat out by Terms of Endearment. Next year, the uh, Killing Fields beat out by Amadeus, which everybody was surprised at. The following year, the color purple, we all thought we'd win, didn't win then. The next year, the, the mission got beat out by Out of Africa. Next year, Moonstruck. And then finally, the sixth year, Rain Man won for best picture. Um, as you, uh, I was asked to speak about the economics of the motion picture industry and the sports industry, and uh, in, in the title of the speech was uh, Investments in Sports and Motion Picture Industries in an Uncertain Economy. Well, I'm here to tell you all, ladies and gentlemen, tonight that in the sports and entertainment industry, there is no uncertain economy. There is no uncertain times because even in the depression, so, and it doesn't matter what's happening in the economic world, whether you have inflation, hyperinflation, uh, deflation, a recession, or a depression, 
Um, motion picture industry and the sports industry seemed to do really well. Like even in the depression in the 30s, for four consecutive years, the motion picture industry grew at greater than a 30% growth rate uh, during those four years. And why, I think most of you probably know the reason why, it's escapism. People, when they lose their jobs and they lose their home, they want to escape, so they run to and get a few hours of uh, escaping from the realities and uh, will go to see movies or go to see a sports uh, uh, game. And uh, this is, uh, I think, one of the reasons why I always thought this was a great, uh, two great industries to be involved in, mainly for that reason. I didn't have to worry how the stock market was going to, uh, do or not do. I didn't have to worry about stocks and bonds, you know, uh, or a crash in, in, the, in the stock market. And same thing with real estate. I didn't have to worry about whether real estate was, uh, you know, in the recession or uh, it, it's, it's impervious, the motion picture uh, industry, to, to, to the, uh, the state of the economy. Same thing with oil and gas investments. You know, they, as you know, from recent times, real estate and oil and gas have been severely uh, uh, impacted by the state of the economy. Now, um, the sports and entertainment industries, for part of the reasons I mentioned, have really been in an 80-year bull market, if you're talking about the, the markets. And the value of sports franchises and film revenues have steadily increased over like eight decades. So I think that's another reason why I'm in this business. Uh, a characteristic, uh, well, let's say there's a lot of other advantages other than the actual economics. For example, tax credits and incentives that mostly all the states uh, here in the U.S. give, and same with a lot of tax credits. We're dealing with some foreign films in the U.K. and Czechoslovakia, and there are plenty of tax credits to go around uh, by those states and countries. And uh, here in the U.S., the federal government, that we've just reenacted this code, uh, IRS Code Section 181, which allows all of you to invest in motion pictures and write off 100% of your investment in that current year. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty heavy-duty uh, statement. For example, if you invested that same amount of money in a real estate um, project, a shopping center, office building, or whatever, you write that investment off in 30 years. Here you have the ability to write it all off in one year. I think if you stop and think about that, that's a, you got 30 times the tax advantages with a motion picture uh, investment than you do with a real estate investment. Um, that was basically the uh, Job Creation Act, which created this code section 181, which actually was discontinued at the end of last year, December 31st, but it's been reenacted and now we'll get that advantage until October of 2014. So invest your money between now and then. <laughs> uh, the, uh, as far as the sports industry is concerned, um, it's basically an asset play. Sports franchise values have increased for, as I said, for eight decades, increasing, ever increasing. As you probably know, the LA Dodgers uh, was just recently purchased, um, and and uh, it, it it was a two point uh, one five billion dollar purchase in 1998. The Dodgers was purchased for, believe it or not, 311 million, and sold in 2004 for 430 million, a 150% increase, like one and a half times your money in six years. And as I said, was recently sold for 2.15 billion, which is a 700% increase in your investment, seven times your initial uh, investment in four, just 14 years. I don't know where else you're gonna get those kind of returns. Uh, actually, the LA Dodgers was purchased by uh, Magic Johnson and uh, a good friend of mine, Peter Guba, who's uh, um, you know expert in the motion picture industry and in producing films, I was fortunate enough to finance uh, two of the films he produced. Actually, about five, but two prominent ones, uh, namely *The Color Purple* and *Rain Man*, both of which uh, Peter produced, which I was fortunate enough to finance, and uh, so he can afford the L.A. Dodgers. <laughs> uh, 
I did finance a couple of other films. He did The Clan of the Cave Bear. If some of you saw that film, there were a lot of people who didn't think it was that great, but it, uh, it, it was uh, a little crazy. But anyway, um, then also just recently over the last few weeks, the San Diego Padres was sold for $800 million, over 10 times, 10 times what it was purchased for 17 years ago in 1995 for 70 million. So you're talking about a tenfold increase. I don't know how you do that in the stock market or certainly not in the bond market or in oil and gas investments or real estate investments. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the Yankees was purchased uh, in 1973 for 6.2 million and is currently valued by Forbes at 1.85 billion. That's only 230 times what it, what it went for in 1973. So for every dollar you invested, you now have $230 in your pocket. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty significant increase. I, uh, I bought and sold uh, uh, sports franchises, minor league sports franchises. For the most part, I bought an arena football league team, which I purchased in 1991. Uh, the Orlando Predators, which is where I uh, reside in Orlando, Florida. We, I paid 125. Uh, uh, my partner was Mad uh, was uh, uh, Davy Johnson, which some of you may know. He was the manager of the New York uh, uh, Mets for a number of years, and then the LA Dodgers also uh, more recently. Uh, so I paid 125,000 for it, and now those teams are selling for over four million. That's 32 times what I purchased it for. And um, probably a lot of you are aware, so I know there's a lot of investment people here, that just in the last couple of weeks that the Manchester United soccer team went public. They sold 10% of it in, a, in an IPO for $234 million. And if you then value that franchise, what's it worth? This is You're talking about a soccer team, ladies and gentlemen. $2.3 billion. Now, I don't, I don't know what kind of real estate you can purchase, you know, uh, uh, for, for $234 million, turn it into a couple of billion in a few years. Um, it actually was purchased for $1.47 billion in 2005, and that was greater than a 50% increase in seven years. So you, you can achieve a pretty significant increase in value. And I think there's a great opportunity here after you see what happens with uh, Manchester United, and that's even a foreign sports franchise, I think there's a tremendous uh, opportunity here for, for us to take other professional sports teams uh, public, including teams from the, national, uh, the Major League Baseball, the NFL, NBA, and the National Hockey League, and also in that arena football. We have gotten uh, quite a few calls over the last... Uh, few weeks or month about teams that are for sale and that I think could be, uh, you know, uh, good investments. Now, motion picture, uh, same kind of thing. They can generate rapid and high cash flow and, and significant returns on investment over a very short period of time. As you know, film comes out, gets released, and huge cash flow over a very short period of time from the theatrical revenues. Then you have considerable revenues subsequent to the initial theatrical release through, through all of the uh, ancillary sources of income, which are no longer ancillary. We used to call them ancillary, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but um, there, I can give you some numbers, like the, the Superman films that I was involved in. I mean, you're talking about huge amounts of cash flow, for example, specifically in the James Bond series, believe it or not. Those James Bond films, of which I financed a couple, have generated over $12.7 billion. $12.7 billion. The Harry Potter series, $7.7 .7 billion. The Toy Story se uh, series, $2.5 billion. Avatar, uh, single films, Avatar is $2.8 billion. And uh, even uh, The Avengers, $1.5 billion. Now, let me ask you this question. How many Empire State Buildings would you have to earn to generate those kinds of billions of dollars within you know, a few months or a year? Uh, I think that you have to look at, at the motion picture industry and the sports industry in the light in which I just uh, uh, portrayed it. Um, US box office revenues alone topped 11.5 billion 
This year, worldwide theatrical box office re revenues are up significantly. They reached 32.6 billion. They're up over uh, uh, 2010, and they're 35% higher than they were just five years ago. So I'd like you to think about that. Um, there's significant box office revenues in the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. If you look at their charts, it's just going straight up in those four countries, and that's going to add to your returns on your investment because these films will be shown in all of those countries as well. Um, there, the beautiful part about investing in the motion picture industry is you're not just investing in one intri in industry. You are investing in a half a dozen industries because you're getting revenues not only from the box office revenues, but you're getting... Um, revenues from the cable TV industry, from the network broadcasting TV industry, uh, you're getting it from the music industry and the soundtracks you sell, from the mer merchandising, a lot of merchandising as you're well aware, toys, clothing, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and then more recently you have DVD sales, uh, video on demand and pay-per-view revenue. Uh, of course you get product placements and I will say that the first film to do product placements was the film I financed, Superman 2. If you remember, ever saw Superman 2, you see Superman getting hit and goes flying back into a huge Coca-Cola sign on 42nd Street and Broadway. And then he, he falls down onto a Marlboro truck. He was there, so that was the first part. But you can get significant revenues these days because people were a little, didn't look on it that kindly back then, but now it happens all the time. Now we are in the digital era, so you're getting, a, a, you know, Tremendous growth in, in, in motion picture revenues being fueled by rapid deployment of digital projection and 3D projection, which powered the worldwide box office to record levels, as I've indicated before. And uh, the rapid growth of digital media and online distribution um, has generated a huge demand for, for quality entertainment and content. And what do we do here at Star Partners? We provide content. We provide films, um, you know, for all of these uh, revenue sources. And uh, now you have these mobile devices, smartphones, PC tablets, computers, set-top boxes, and then you have revenue coming in from Netflix and Crackle and Hulu and so on and so forth. So why invest in motion pictures? I think I've uh, kind of uh, given you some, some good reasons. And uh, even the independent film industry are generating uh, really huge numbers. I mean, you had films like Passion of the Christ, which took in 600 million, The Blair Witch Project, about a quarter of a billion. Uh, my big fat Greek wedding, and I heard somebody mention that tonight, 370 million. And Pulp Fiction, Slumdog Millionaire, you know, has 370, uh, uh, 377 uh, million, King's Speech, 414 million, and The Artist, 133 million. And don't uh, downplay uh, independent films, because in the last three years, an independent film was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, the Artist last year, and uh, King's Speech the year before, and Slumdog Millionaire. So I think there's a, a great great potential to make a lot of money in the independent film market, which is an area that Star Partners is now concentrating in. And um, I, I will say, because uh, I know Ziad wants to cut it short and, and uh, throw it open to questions, but um, the, uh, huh? <laughs> are you saying it's okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, uh, um, yeah, the, the, there's been a tremendous uh, uh, increase in box office revenues and sports franchise, uh, you know, value of them. I mean, that's a big asset play, whereas in the motion picture industry, you have a cash flow play. So if you combine those investments, it's great for your portfolio. If you've got cash, uh, cash flow and asset appreciation. Anyway, we're, uh, we're getting inundated because of our reputation, experience, background, history, uh, credibility, whatever you want to call it, with, with many, many films, uh, projects. And uh, so we are in the process of looking for additional um, financing sources from individual angel investors, uh, private placements, public offerings. We may be doing some of those. Private, we're looking to private equity groups, hedge funds, venture capital groups, investment banks, banks, uh, and other institutions. 
In closing, I'd like to uh, thank the UZI for giving me the opportunity to be part of the Financial Policy Council. You've made my day. <laughs> <laughs> And as I have my note here, the Clint from the Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry uh, film from the Sudden Min Pack, a film financed by Star Partners. Go ahead and make my day. I hope I've made your day. Thank you very much, Alan.